Good afternoon, everyone. To today, we will talk about the introductory part of forensic chemistry. So with this, our, the, we will have the following objectives. First, understand the field of study of forensic chemistry. Second, know the role of forensic chemistry in the criminal justice system. Third, determine the scope and nature of the study of forensic chemistry. Fourth, identify the basic roles of forensic chemists as an expert witness in a court of law. And five, understand the nature of tests performed by a forensic chemist. Now, what is forensic chemistry? Forensic chemistry as defined is that branch of chemistry which deals with the application of chemical principles in the solution of problems that arise in connection with the administration of justice. Now, looking into the definition, we are actually forensic chemistry deals with the application of the principles of chemistry in the administration of justice. So, who are these forensic chemists? Forensic chemists are actually chemist people or professional chemists who specializes in the forensic work, meaning these people do examinations in their field and uh, appear in court for as expert witness. So it is also defined as the chemistry applied in the elucidation of legal problems. So basically, if we talk about forensic chemistry, we're talking about chemistry as applied to the criminal justice system or in the administration of justice. Now, what are the tasks of forensic or chemists or chemistry? Now, forensic chemistry is tasked to examine the chemical nature and composition of various specimens. Now, look into this. We're, forensic chemistry deals with the chemical nature. So we're talking about qualitative examination of the specimens and of course the composition of the various specimen. So specifically, forensic chemistry deals with blood no? because normally we found blood at the crime scene. So it is now the task of the forensic chemist to examine this blood, whether this blood belongs to animals or it belongs to human. Now, secondly, forensic chemistry also deals with other body fluids or bodily fluids, such as uh, urine, semen, and all other fluids that comes out from the body. So the forensic chemist will determine whether, for instance, uh, the fluid that is taken or extracted from the vagina of a victim is, is semen or not. Now, other than this, forensic chemist also deals with gunpowder and explosives. So forensic chemist deals with uh, in determining whether a person have fired a uh, firearm or not. It also deals in determining what kind of explosive is used in the explosion. Other than that, forensic chemists also deals with studying uh, poisons. So whether a person who died is poisoned or if he is poisoned, what type of poison is used. So another thing, forensic chemists also or forensic chemistry also deals with dangerous drugs. So on the part of a forensic chemist in the crime laboratory, it deals with the qualitative examination of drugs. So in this, it determines the constituents of a drug specimen submitted unto them. Another thing, it also considering that Republic Act 9165 deals with uh, position, and it's very particular with how much or the quantity of the substance in position Forensic chemistry also deals with quantitative examination of the substance recovered from suspects. It also deals with wines or alcohol. Uh, so that is another nature of the function of chemistry. Forensic chemistry also deals with soil analysis. So this is a way to determine whether or not uh, there is a similarity of the soil that is uh, taken from the victim as to the crime scene. Then it also deals with metallurgy. Now, what are the scope of forensic chemistry? Now, if you observe, forensic, based on the composition of the examinations conducted by forensic chemists, forensic chemistry embraces a large and diversified fields of study. Now, it does not limit alone 
with providing an insight on the chemical side of any criminal investigation. Other than it, it also provides an analysis of any material no, and the quality of which may give rise to the legal proceeding. Take note, forensic chemistry is not limited to purely chemical questions involved in legal proceedings. It goes beyond it. No, what are the stages in the practice of forensic chemistry? Forensic chemistry observes a strict adherence on the principles and procedures in dealing with samples or evidence. First, in the collection or reception of the specimen, forensic chemistry observes a very strict adherence to the guiding principles, such as, first, it must have a sufficiency of sample. So meaning, if we talk about sufficiency of sample, in the collection and reception of specimen, enough sample should be submitted. So it would rather be uh, too much rather than uh, deficiency in samples. Secondly, there has to be a standard for comparison. Remember, the items or the standards that we obtain from the crime scene are considered as question. So we need something to compare with in order for us to determine. For instance, with regards to the determination whether blood comes from human, there has to be a standard as to the principles as to how uh, human blood are uh, considered. Thirdly, there has to be or the maintenance of individuality. So meaning each of the specimens submitted should have or should be individualized as to not to contaminate with other evidence. Remember, in forensic chemistry, the integrity of the evidence is very much of paramount importance. No? Next, as to the guiding principles in the collection and reception, that evidence or the specimen should be properly labeled and sealed before submitted to the laboratory for examination. So this is a way that this evidence could be identified. At the same time, the chain of custody could be observed properly. Uh, the second of the stage in the, in the practice of forensic chemistry is the actual examination of the specimen. The actual examination of the specimen is usually conducted at the crime laboratory. So it is done by a forensic expert or a forensic chemist who is licensed and authorized to perform the examinations. After doing the examination, the forensic chemist or the expert will now make a report as to the result of the examination that he performed. He will communicate this result to the law enforcement or to the requesting law enforcement authorities. And of course, the last stage in the practice of forensic chemistry is the court appearance. In this case, the forensic chemist is subjected to questions in the court as an expert witness. Now, these are the stages in the practice of forensic chemistry.